You are listening to Endometriosis Unplugged, hosted by I Care Better, a podcast dedicated to everything endometriosis. We hope that these stories and insights will help those suffering get the help they need and to remind you, you're not alone. I'm your host, pelvic floor physical therapist and integrative nutritionist, Jandra Mueller. I'm here today with Emily Saar, the CEO and inventor by necessity of the pelvic people, formerly known as ONET, has emerged as a pivotal figure in public health innovation, driven by her own experience with painful sex. After 10 plus years of being dismissed by doctors and the greater zeitgeist that boasted bigger as better, Emily has created an evidence-based, clinically backed ecosystem of tools for the 119 million women and assigned female at birth people who will have painful sex today. Joining her is Tamer Hill, who is one of the co-owners and CEO of Pacific Roots. Tamer received a bachelor's degree in kinesiology at Occidental College in LA and went on to receive a master's degree in teaching biology, where she taught at La Cunada High School for 16 years, along with coaching the girls' varsity basketball team for 14. In 2014, Tamer launched the Pasadena Kona Ice franchise with one truck and soon grew her fleet to three trucks and two mini trucks before selling the franchise in 2019. After Tamer sold her Kona Ice franchise, her brother, Trevor Hill, convinced her to bring the skills she had learned as a business owner and entrepreneur into the CBD business and created a family company that people can trust with Pacific Roots and Volcana. I'm excited to have them on the show today and I hope you enjoy the interview. Okay, so thank you both for joining me today. I did your introductions, and I am very excited to have you both on. This is a different episode than we've done in the past. It's so far been different healthcare providers with their own experience with endo or patient stories. And so this is my first time having people on that have companies and businesses around products that address pelvic pain. So I'm very excited to highlight them. These are products that I recommend all the time to my patients and have gotten really good feedback. And Emily, with the Pelvic People, formerly Onet, is launching her new product, the Kiwi, which has been really cool. And it feels really great also, by the way. (laughs) So I'd love to talk to you and learn more about what products you have, what your experience has been, why you got into it, so we can hear from both of you. Why don't you start, Emily? Yeah, I'm Emily. I'm the founder and I, I call myself an inventor by necessity because I am primarily a patient founder and um, I founded a company that is clinician backed and it's helping the 119 million women who will have and people with vaginas who will have painful sex today. Um, painful sex is completely underrepresented in research and clinical advising in patient education. And it has been my mission to found, fundamentally change that. Uh, so as someone who experienced uh, deep pain, specifically during sex, I looked for help unsuccessfully for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I felt completely powerless in a body that I did not understand. And so finally, at a deep point of frustration with myself and, um, and the dismissal that I had been feeling from doctors, I just came up with this idea to create ONA, uh, which was to control the death and penetration. Um, and before I, call I knew it, the it, sex bumper, the sex bumper, <laughs> penis donut. It's like the Kleenex of penis bumpers, um, but it, it's not just for PIV. It can be used on toys, on dilators. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but it's it's been really cool because for so long I felt completely alone in my experience of pain during sex. And the moment that I started talking about it, I couldn't believe how long I wasn't. Yeah. Um, so and it's just been an ongoing collaboration and we we just launched kiwi so i'm saying so many things you asked me a small question and i get so excited that's okay um so we launched on for deep pain during sex and we actually we just launched kiwi which is super exciting um it's like a multi-purpose massage tool that's designed to help with entry pain relief so and like that burning tearing feeling the tightness at the vaginal entry uh, it's designed to help with entry pain relief in a way that feels good well okay, thank you Yes. <laughs> the pressure's all mine and now, Tamer. right? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the background of Pacific Roots is my sister is a pelvic pain physician. She was working in a specialty clinic and oh, amazing. Um, and was just looking for an alternative for her patients that didn't want to take Valium or Diazepam or couldn't take it, couldn't tolerate it, or they had a history of uh, uh, drug abuse or whatever the case may be. And people are just generally looking for more... Uh, natural 
solutions. Yeah. And so she had um, been at a, a pelvic pain conference, heard about how CBD can help with with pain. And so she had a compound to reformulate. Um, and anyway, the suppositories were very successful for, for her patients. So we kind of, um, and everything is legal hemp. So a lot of people are like, wait, you put what, where now? And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is, it's not designed to make you high. It's right. not supposed to make you high unless you, you know, are using a lot, um, all at once. Um, uh, but it, the whole point is, is an alternative. Um, and it was really great because I was at a, an endo summit here in Orlando um, a couple weeks ago. And it was the first conference because I know Emily and Jander from some other conferences, which is more practitioner based. But mm -hmm. this particular endo summit had actual endo patients attending, yeah. which was really fantastic. So I was like, hey, here's a sample. Go, are you in pain right now? Go try it. And it was amazing the results that were coming back. And they're like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. Like, and. I don't claim it's a cure, but what I like to tell providers is it's another tool in your toolbox to help patients manage pain, whether it's during sex or whether it's an endo flare up, anything that's causing pain and tension in the pelvic region. Um, this is a potential tool to help manage that. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. The same, a day, yeah. Hey, you know what? It's always fun when people learn what a dealer like you do. What? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. But They're like CBD weed in the vulva or in the vagina, essentially, or and rectum, or rectum, or rectum. Weed. That's because true. If you can't if you can't tolerate it vaginally, it's um, after smoking um, cannabis, whether that's CBD or if, um, THC. A rectal uh, suppository is the best way to get CBD systemic into the system. When it's taken, guys, it will stay more localized. So, but it's it's uh, can be very effective if it works for people. It's it's a game changer. Exactly, and that with endo, you yes, there is an end game of whether that's surgery or getting rid of the lesions, addressing the lesions. But we know even with really excellent surgeons, sometimes there's persistent pain, and that can be due to other pain generators, or it can just be due to the dismissal, the seven to 10 year delay. And so our nervous system gets ramped up. There's, you know, the majority of people have pelvic floor dysfunction. And so we need the more tools, the better. And specifically, one of the symptoms of endometriosis that may not be pelvic floor related, although it can be both, is the fact that the lesions oftentimes in, are found in the rectovaginal septum. And that creates a lot of deeper pain because these lesions are innervated. And so when you already deal with pain, let's add maybe you're not fully aroused or you're dealing with pelvic tension, but then th that deep thrusting really hits those innervated lesions and can be really painful. And unfortunately, you can't just do some relaxation because it's a structural change. And so that's where the ONET really comes in handy. Again, maybe that's not the end game for some. It might be, and it works, and that's great too but it's a tool that can be used at any point in your journey or as needed. Totally, totally. And just to give like a quick explainer on what it is. So it's this really stretchy stack of, of linking rings. If you imagine, I don't, this is maybe a terrible example, but like, uh, Will you a, hold a it donut? up more so we could see? Oh, oh, it's a yeah. huge video. Yeah. It's yeah. like a donut stacking toy, like a children's donut stacking toy. You know, the, like the yellow peg in the middle yes. and you put the rainbow donuts on top <laughs> the of tower. it. It's like, yes. that, like significantly more elegant and comfortable and inviting. Um, so, so essentially, ONUT is kind of, it's worn at the base of a penetrating partner. So again, that could be a penis, a dilator, or a toy. And then these these rings are so squishy that during penetration, they actually compress down like a buffer. They stay outside of the body. But the fun part about it is that the rings come apart. Yes. So you can add or remove them at any time during any position to control exactly how much goes in. Yeah. Right? So there's there's so much uh, room for exploration and almost it opens up a new dialogue when you're having sex, too, because sometimes I mean, I know personally when sex is painful, it's like ah, like my whole body tightens up. I don't know what to say because I don't want to offend yeah. a partner. So when you bring kind of this unbiased, like fun, squishy thing into the equation, it's like, oh. How does this feel? You know, there's like these these very easy check-in points and jumping. Like, oh, do you want to add a ring? Do you want to take one away? Like, do you want should we move this way? It's yeah. like there, there's a there's a, a focal point that's outside of both of the people who are having sex. 
Yeah, and it opens communication, which we know it's one of the things that every not everyone does, but many people do, and we just don't like talk to each other about it. And so I I love that about it as well. Yeah, and it's just it's so easy to blame like yourself during the moment. You know, it's so easy to just feel like it's your fault or that you're the problem. Or I I mean, me I'll say the we in this moment, but um. So, I mean, what we really try to focus on also, it's like, I'm not coming on this podcast and be like, buy my stuff, because that sounds like so, like, it's like a dagger in my heart. Um, as someone who understands the experience of pain during sex, like, I know what it feels like to feel like a failure um, Yeah. at, like, the deepest point of that bottom. And so I've really worked hard with my team to create a brand that is just feels like a warm hug when you get here, uh, because... Oh, I love that. You know, it's like, I just sometimes I just want to feel like I'm understood. Like, I'm not the only person who's going through this. And that, you know, there are people who believe me. And that is exactly what we try to do. It's like throughout every part, no matter what stage you're in, when you come to us, we will hold you in whatever way you want to You know? Um, oh. Before we get into anything else, there's actually, we're about to let me find it. Climbing. This is why you're looking like. I know. Oh. So I'm it's like. A- Get so emotional. I'm actually like PMSing right now. I'm just gonna be honest about that. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. We it's have hormones. Helpful. That's yes, we it's do. lots of them. Um, I, I already like... started. If it makes you feel any better, Emily. So <laughs> I'm mid mid go here. <laughs> anyway. Um. So there's a letter that comes in the box just just to kind of get into this idea that. Um, Sometimes it's really important to, for me, to create the like the messaging with people that like I really wanted to hear when I needed it the most. So I include a letter in the box, oh. every box that goes out, and it says, "You made it! A big congratulations, not only on your new ONUT, but also on all the hard work that led you here. The journey is never easy. I tell you with my full heart, you are sexy exactly the way you are. You're a problem solver." a shoulder to lean on, a spreader of joy. You put a lot of love out there, and you deserve to live that love you share. So in the spirit of curiosity, embrace adjustment, awkward moments, and small, mighty victories, and know deep down, but not too deep, that you're doing great. Now go play. All my love, Emily. So that's who we are, you know? Yeah. You feel that when you talk with yourself in person. I think the first time I actually met you was uh, at this past Iswish. And I love that you put that in and it is heartfelt. And I'm glad you're coming on and talking because I, I really think reading something, okay, these marketing people, they know, but I think hearing it from you is so genuine. And I think that's really a special part of the product as well. Appreciate that. I feel like I need to up our game and our boxes now. Like <laughs> you're inspiring, you're inspiring others. Yeah, see? I mean, it, Emily is so genuine. I, I think I've met you, known you for years now, Emily, and through the conference circuit. And so it's she is just genuine, and her product mm-hmm. is amazing, and she always cares about people. And you can tell just watching everybody. Yeah, I flock agree. to her. And that there's something special there. Well, I think so. also like a combination of what Tamar, you and I, what we're what we're trying to bring into the world is is creating tools that can be a part of the clinician toolkit. It can be a part of the, the human toolkit, you know, for mm-hmm. people who are using them uh, with with tools and and products that people actually want to use. Like, there's so much stuff out there that's like advertisement. I'm going to fix your problem. Nah, nah, nah. Like there's so much stuff that's like talent that's like berating me. It's like, I'm going to work, you know, it's like, and then I buy this thing and it doesn't work or it doesn't mm-hmm. do the one thing that it says it's going to do. And then I like feel even worse about myself. And so what I really appreciate about the things that we're putting out, um, or, you know, hopefully that this is how it's being received is that people actually want, there's like an intrinsic motivation for that people want to use these things. Um, and that yeah. we're not just like pushing stuff on people willy nilly. Exactly. And that's why I love, you know, it's really helpful to have samples and both of you have, you know, given us samples. And I think there's a difference in like, hey, you should try this versus, hey, 
look at this cool tool. Can you feel it? Like, look what it does. Show them. And I have like a box, a whole box. Now it's like probably two of with all the things. And when I do my education, I put it in front of them and I'm like, let's, okay, here's this, here's this option. And I have different varieties because people are different, right? And I know that you came out with your own too. And I want to make sure people know this. You have a wider size in your Ona as well, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just the more stackable rings, but you also have um, two different sizes. And exactly. so we just, we just have the wider size now. And oh, you can, perfect. You can see me right now, but it stretches 16 inches wide. Oh my God. And if you can't fit into that, then we have a different issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was thinking about this with both of you. How fun was it to like make? try to like make these and go through the development and the research and development and the process of it. Can you talk a little bit? I'm just curious now in both your products. Tamar, you go. I've been hogging. Oh, oh. oh no, that's okay. So we actually now have four lines of um, suppositories and a lot of the, our lines came from needs of patients and needs of um, different kind of user groups, so to speak. So, of course, whenever you're dealing with CBD and um, cannabis, there's always the fear of, you know, it was a schedule one drug, right? Um, and it was for so long. And there's a, a quite a torrid history of it, mostly involving a bunch of lobbyists for like the paper industry and building materials industry because they looked at cannabis as a threat to their business. And this, so somehow they got it through that, you know, this was going to ruin the lives of Americans. So they had it banned and schedule one. Uh, so now there's very little research done about it. Um, but most importantly, people are very nervous about the repercussions because uh, some people get drug tested. Some people, um, if they're a first responder or military, um, it's funny because we can give them Valium and narcotics and opiates, but we can't give them CBD. Right. That so was actually it, one of my questions is, was about drug testing and all of that. So as a result, we do have this uh, THC-free line. And by THC-free, um, so when you get the cannabis plant, if you look at a CBD plant versus a, a marijuana plant, you literally cannot tell the difference between the two. They look the same. They smell the same. The only way to know the difference between them is to have them tested. Mm. And you test the levels of THC. You test the levels of CBD and how it pops. I have actually a pretty funny story of a reverse drug deal with the Orlando PD that we were sending some hemp flour to somebody and the drug dogs missed it because, you know, it's all yeah. like pot. It looks like pot. Um, so anyway, they call us and they're like, hey, uh, we found something in your, and we are part of the FedEx hemp program. Just so, so it's all, we're all compliant. But so we literally met in a parking lot, like off, this kind of shady area and they return this package they're like well you know you have what you're testing so we think it's good so we're going to return it to you i'm like oh my God. thanks orlando pd for giving us our drugs back you know so anyway oh. it's hilarious so um the only way to tell the difference is to test it so going back to my original point some people just are super nervous about um getting high getting tested so um the THC free, we have two. Um, one is a kind of our basic suppository. It, all of them are made with cocoa butter and all of them contain magnesium. Magnesium is designed to really help angry muscles and help them relax. Um, and then we have the CBD. So our wellness daily is just those three ingredients. It's cocoa butter, magnesium, and the CBD isolate. So there's a no detectable amounts of THC in there. If you feel weird on it, it's either psychosomatic or magnesium. Psychosomatic. Magnesium making you happy. I don't. I. I don't know. Um. So, and then our other THC pro product is a vaginal dryness formula, and our compounder really worked with us on this one because um, a lot of her docs were writing a script for non-estrogen based. Um, dryness formulas and mm -hmm. so like a um, hyaluronic can... acid or something exactly so in the formula there's hyaluronic acid the cbd and magnesium of course but and there's also a mixture of aloe and vitamins a and e in there um, so it's great for hydrating anyone who's peri or um menopausal that's starting to experience pain during sex whereas they never had before that's a result of just 
dryness and the wares of age. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a great hormone alternative for that. So those are our THC free varieties. And then um, having said all of that, they're great products, but the stuff that spells best has THC yeah. in it, mostly because it just works better for cannabis purists. The idea is that the cannabis plant works together in um, kind of in harmony and helps activate each of the cannabinoids and things work better. So then we have the Wellness Plus, which is our best selling. That's our highest dose. It has 100 milligrams um, of full spectrum, which means that it will still be below the legal limit of 0.3%, um, but it will also have other cannabinoids in it in addition to CBD. And then we also, and we sell that in a 10 and a 30 count. So there's some people that will be taking this daily, sometimes twice daily to help with. And again, you won't see the word pain anywhere on our website because uh, we can't. We actually had to scrub 200 reviews recently on oh, the credit card processing because they mentioned the word pain or they mentioned any sort of uh, medical condition. So we have to delete oh. any reviews that mention those. Um, it's really fun. Um, oh my goodness. Getting rid not, of... Because it's just categorized, like a wellness product versus like a prescription for a specific condition? Or why is that? Because the FDA will not allow us to make any claims about medical conditions, even though I it's see. not us saying, hey, this really helped with my pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, that Because that's mm. a medical condition, we're not allowed to say that we help with it. Interesting. I can talk about it, but you won't see it anywhere on our website. Right. Um, so it's really hard advertising something you can't tell anybody what you do. <laughs> so Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge. Um, so, but the, but most people are taking it daily, if not multiple times a day, just to help manage the symptoms because they don't want to take Advil. Like I met an endo client at uh, the last, she's, uh, doesn't want to take any narcotics. Yeah. Um, she's been taking Advil. She now has an ulcer because she's been taking so much Advil. Um, and I'm like, please just try this. I really mm -hmm. hope it works for you. Just please try it. And she's just in chronic pain. Um, so uh, and a lot of people are like another woman, she was wheelchair bound from endo. I mean, yeah. this is like super dramatic. It sounds like I'm in a tent, you know, back in the 1800s in a revival. And but this lady's in a wheelchair and she goes and tries it. She goes into the meeting and her husband comes out and buys four 30 count boxes. Oh, and later she came out. She goes, oh, my gosh, it just felt like everything relaxed. She was like, mm -hmm. it just relaxed. Um, so. For patients that are really chronic and it works for them, they, you know, will take it as an alternative to that, or they'll take it during the day and then they might take their narcotics or Valium at night so they can function. Yeah. So, but we also have the five count pleasure. Sorry, I'm almost done. No, uh, go for so it. The plus is our best seller. Hands down, it all outsells all of our products. Uh, but that pleasure box is, is in, sells in a five count. And there's really no difference between it and the plus only marketing because people who are experiencing pain aren't sitting there like, hey, all right, this is going to be fun, you know, mm -hmm. because the pain is usually what's causing uh, and anticipating the pain. Yeah. So people that are in pain are not going to be buying the pleasure, but it's also a great starting point to see if it works for them. Mm -hmm. Because it's just 25 milligrams less, they can they can start with the five count if they don't have samples from their PT or provider. Um, so it's great kind of entry suppository. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's consistent with the feedback that I've got from my patients as well. And that's why I love the samples too, is because they can try it. And, and I think I think several people have gone to buy more. And with both the products, you know, unlike medications that you probably need to take regularly, especially if they're on neuromodulators, which are like gabapentin, amitriptyline, Lyrica, these are not meds that you can just take as needed. You know, yes, Advil, things like that. But as you mentioned, there's other consequences with tools like these, you can use them in so many different ways and you can stop using them as well. And so it doesn't require a weaning process, but also for the types of pain and symptoms that those with endo or pelvic pain have, they these tools might be actually better suited to address the cause of the pain anyways, which is really nice. 
Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If you need more samples, let me know. <laughs> always, I, and that's always. what I tell people is like, I, I don't want you to spend a lot of money if this is not going to work for you. I, I yeah. want you to try it and have it be helpful before you, before you put yeah. your hard-earned money into Invest it. Invest into it. Now, yeah. probably not so much for you, Emily, but this may come into play in like when we we're talking about outside of the U.S., but state is there any states that you can't sell these suppositories to or do either of you go outside of the u.s can people internationally purchase these products hey maria for, for us it's a simple no yeah. um I, shipping outside the even getting it to canada i mean you would think like there they would be an ocean away when it comes to cbd products canada does not play with our cbd um yeah but what I tell patients that are international is we can send it anywhere in the U.S. And if you can then forward it on somehow, more power to you. But yeah, right now it's if, like in Europe, most of their legal limit is 0.2%. Mm. And so, and, and quite frankly, like the, what defines hemp is 0.3% in the United States. They just decided that. Mm. Like, Europe decided it was 0.2. Some countries decided it's 0.1. So, um, interesting. It's just a completely arbitrary number that they they chose. But in in reality, and there's a lot of legislation out there, like here in Florida, they're trying to change the legislation um, a bit, where really they should be focused on milligrams because it's about 10 milligrams that can make you high, unless you're mm -hmm. really THC sensitive, and then less can do that and so they're trying to crack down on products that because if you get like a, a, a jar like this and say hey it's 0.3 percent thc well all you have to do is drink it and you're going to be sky high because the volume is so high right so they're trying to address that I, I don't like florida the current solution to it is not great um, for products like ours um but but anyway 0.3 is arbitrary it's not universal it's not international so we'll ship to the u.s anywhere even puerto rico but not beyond okay and then i guess yeah i was thinking more dilators because i know in some countries like they're sex toys right and so yours are actually different because they're not dilators but so and really there's no restrictions anywhere for you for your products Emily. No, we, we send them all over the world, even Great. Um, very religiously conservative countries uh, accept our products, which is really exciting. I, I think generally because Amazing. they don't look like a penis. Exactly. <laughs> which helps a lot of things, but also international shipping. <laughs> yeah. And if people don't know, which it, it's some, it was surprising to me, too, that you think of dilators, this, I'm in the medical field. This is a medical device that's helpful for certain things. And yes, I suppose you could essentially use it for pleasure or sex play in, with some of these. But most of my patients aren't looking at this dilator being like, this is going to be my sex toy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it, it's just sad that these things are restricted and people in other places can't always get these tools that they need. So yeah. 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 I mean, to get into the, the origin behind Kiwi, uh, a lot of what we were trying to do was create as friendly of a product as we could. Um, so for those of you who are just listening and can't see, Kiwi is kind of like, if you imagine like a parentheses, like, Jandra, how would you describe this, this shape here? It kind of looks like a peep. A peep? It does yes. kind of look like a peep. We, like we, a were, peep. Gonna, we were going to call it peep. Um, cause it looks like a little bird. Um, yeah, but the thing is yeah. our, our designer that we worked with is Dush and she's like, that is not going to happen. One, because I understand that you have this cute candy bird called Peep, <laughs> but in the Netherlands, we have the red light district and that's it. She, it was like <sighs> hard. No. So we ended up with Kiwi oh cause it's like God. a cool green color. And also it's an adorable, adorable bird. It is. And it's really soft and I feel like maybe you told me this at a swish and that's why I got in my head, but like you really could kind of use this point as like a massager kind of anywhere. And there's two, two um, vibration features. And so what I kind of say for this, and I'm assuming that this is why you kind of created is like you said, the more entrance pain, but there's also some clitoral stimulation with it. And mm -hmm. so 
my patients that have vestibulodynia or like neuroproliferative vestibulodynia, which I uh, had a podcast in last season about where there is a connection between endo and neuroproliferative sure. post surgery. This is going to be so helpful in helping to relax and address some of that entrance pain that's no longer from the tissue, but like scar tissue, muscle tightness. Yeah. And I think really the vibration is key. And that's what um, there's the milli-dilator has a vibration. Mm -hmm. So different type of dilator, but the vibration is really key in that they really like that piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, to, exactly. You just like hit the nail on the head. So the, the idea with Kiwi is that it's a multi-purpose myofascial release tool that can be used both internally and externally. And it's, it's this like kind of boomerang peep shape, if you will, uh, that, you know, it, it has a shallow insertion piece and uh, you can't really see me now, but it's basically half the length of a, piece, of a chapstick. So oh. it's about an inch and a half. So uh, so it, it really just addresses those outermost uh, superficial pelvic floor muscles, and then you're inviting clitoral stimulation. So you could do kind of your dilator exercises. You can do your clock work. You can do transverse perineal massage. Now bringing in both internal vibration and external vibration as well. So while we're getting the physiological benefits of vibration, we're also really bridging that gap between this like medicalized tool and a sexual experience. You know, we, we all, we're creating positive associations with touch as opposed to fear-based associations with touch. Uh, and that's why this is like, it's so um, friendly in that way. Yes. Uh, in so order have, to unlock that for people. I have my pelvis model right here. And so oh essentially, God, I, <laughs> I mean, the holes probably need to be a little bit bigger. It's paper, so it doesn't stretch, but you're really not, if I kind of force it a little bit, there we go. You're really not getting- Sorry, no, just... only the paper. <laughs> we don't have nice stretchy paper like our our skin, but essentially, you know, it doesn't go very far inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, so if they didn't want clitoral stimulation, could you they essentially it use it either? Way. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Either or. Either or. Awesome. Yeah. And so then essentially, the different... okay. Yeah, you go. go for it. Oh, the different ends can be used for different massage purposes externally in different areas as well. So, um, you know, there's a there's a narrow a tapered end that can be used for trigger point massage externally. There's this kind of medium rocking end that can be used for perineal massage. There's this broad area that can do like large sweeping motions in the inner thighs, the lower abs, the glutes. You know, when it comes to that that ongoing guarding sensation, it's not just the pelvic floor that's involved. We have a much broader muscle group that needs to be addressed. Um, mm -hmm. But then also everything about this is designed to rock. So you can do like light vulvar rocking. You can use any of it to just like touch lightly around it. Like there's so many different ways to use this that it doesn't really force any one particular way. Right? Right. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. It's kind of like a Swiss army peep. I mean, I right? really doesn't feel like it's stabbing anything. No, like, but you know, like, it's just army knife. Like You've got all the different things that can, all the tools. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's one tool. It's a multi-tool. Sorry. Multi-tool. Yeah. Well, and then that way, whatever stage that someone is in, it can be used however you want to use it, whenever you want to use it that way. And then if over time you want to change it, you can, you know? Um, or over I time, think... your pain is better and you use it for pleasure. Totally. Totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, getting that value getting add, mm -hmm. value yes. add right there. Well, and that's what kind of drove Kiwi in a very big way. You know, we started with three main questions. It was like, how do we incorporate? We know that arousal can help both physiologically and psychologically. So, how can we incorporate arousal and still provide a clinically trusted tool? Like, how can we create something that clinicians still want to refer? Mm -hmm. um, how can we? You know, it's natural that humans feel anxious about things that hurt. So how can we create something that actually addresses some of these underlying issues, um, like physiologically and psychologically? And then as a third item, it's, it's like, we know that tools are only helpful if you want to use them. Mm -hmm. So how can we create something that people want to use, you know, that people are even maybe excited to use? Yeah. Uh, because if we don't want to use something, then we're already coming in with a mental sense of guarding. Um, and so that really drove the initial design process uh, because we actually wanted to start with just an external product. 
uh, to really test how vibration and, and mental relaxation can relax the pelvic floor. But in talking, we spent hundreds of hours interviewing um, clinicians and researchers and people to find that there has to be some degree of insertion in, in order to really work those superficial pelvic floor muscles. But it doesn't have to be like eight inches of insertion. No. It can be one and a half. So like, mm -hmm. let's scale our tools to accurately represent how much, how, how much impact we can have with maybe less than we think yeah. we need. And still make a difference. And, and still make a difference, yeah. And it's like very inviting, right? It doesn't look scary. And I remember when I first started working, there wasn't a lot of these different tools and dilators out. And my patients were given these like just long, white, plastic, hard, like cylinders there there was no not even a, like really a shape to it. it was just like a cylinder and it's yes they are cheaper yes they you know come in more sizes but no one wanted to use them so what good is the tool if you don't want to use it yeah yeah well, and it, when it comes down to it there's lots of different ways to relax the pelvic floor muscles mm -hmm. so let's let's use those right and what's I, your uh, product made out of what's the kiwi made out of emily it's a yeah it's a medical grade silicone silicone yeah so yeah latex free for people yes, free yes. That. yeah so. and which means if you're using some lube you want to make sure that you really use a good uh water-based water -based. Lube. yeah for we sure. happen to have that here in <laughs> pacific <laughs> roots there we go we have a water-based lube which is very popular so so essentially um, you could you know for people with endo there's oftentimes you know we hear dyspareunia or painful sex as one of the main um, main factors or main symptoms, right? And so when we think of just endo, we're thinking probably more just isolated deep pain. But when we're thinking of pelvic floor dysfunction, which kind of comes with endo or the birth control pill we know is associated with vestibulodynia in some people, you know, you can have superficial pain that's not necessarily directly caused by the endo, but is caused by either treatments for or the fact that you haven't had it addressed or ongoing symptoms. And so you can use your kiwi to maybe vibrate, get some blood flow, insert to address your superficial pain. And then the O-nut can be used for the deep pain for deep. along yeah. with, you know, putting in some CBD suppositories for overall relaxation. Yeah. So they really kind of go hand in hand. Or you can start out with your CBD, <laughs> let it kick in as you use your other tools. Well, and that's what, what I, I like about when you're, oh yeah, you go. No, I was just saying, just to go along with that, Jenner's, a lot of the PTs like it because if they could take it, take repository 15 to 20 minutes before a session, they yeah. actually get further with the patients because they can tolerate more, uh, I don't want to say more pain, but they're not as anxious and tense. So that right. something like the Kiwi we is going, going to be way more effective when you can actually do the exercises because you're not so tight. Correct. You can actually get more to the root of the whatever. If it's a trigger point, you're not dealing with all this extra muscle tension and anxiousness going into exactly. it. Yeah, absolutely. So go ahead, Emily. No, I was going to say, there's also a, an interesting component here is like, if, if someone is in a partnership, how do you navigate sexual activity and these tools with a partner? And what I love about Lube and what I love about Kiwi is that they invite a partner to participate in, in a mm -hmm. really spacious way. Like there's no wrong way to use lube unless you like pour it on your head and use too much. But like, you know, whatever. There's, there, you can really just try stuff. And, mm -hmm. and in a situation where there's generally constraints and restriction and fear, now all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. Like let's, let's start here. Like let's mm -hmm. see, let's work with this. And, and then, and then there, that, that intimacy is oftentimes maybe the hardest thing to rebuild, not the hardest yeah. thing, because there's a lot of hard things when it comes to endo and pelvic pain. Um, but, but there's like, it's the, 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 in between the lines, it's like, it's, it's the nonverbal is the intangible that, that to rebuild with a partnership that happens when you have a tool that invites you to try things out. Yeah. And going back to your comment in the beginning too, and I meant to say this earlier on, I don't think it's always just the person experiencing the pain that can feel like a failure. There's a huge component oftentimes to the partner because they're unsure if they're going to hurt you. They don't want to see you in pain. And so it, it, that in and of itself 
can create this disruption in that partnership and that that part of that relationship, right? And the sure. intention is well-meaning, of course, but it, it does create a divide. And, you know, it's not always about the orgasm, although that's nice, of course. It, it's also people want, especially in pain too, many still want to be intimate or have some sort of sexual activity because it's important to them for that intimacy in their relationship. And so to have these tools like the suppositories that can help relaxation, the reality is, is it may not make your pain go away all the way, but it, it can still provide that experience that's okay with both partners to be able to maintain whatever that is for that, those individuals, right? So that, that's also why I really love having different tools in people's toolbox that will help with that because I had a patient the other day or a couple of weeks ago, longstanding, and, you know, she was asking about um, sex therapy and, and she's been with this for a long time and she still engages because it's important for her in their relationship. And she asked me, do you have a, a therapist that will work with the pain versus just <laughs> have the intention of well, let's get you out of pain. And she's like, because right now, like that's not the reality. And I want to maintain a good relationship with my partner. And I, and I fully recognize it may not be pain-free and that's okay. Like how to navigate it despite the pain. Right. And, and I thought that was a really important um, conversation. Yeah. Well, even at the end of summit that I was just at, um, so many of the doctors and clinicians would say it's, it's so important for partners of endo patients to be there with them hearing yeah. what was being said and shared at this at this uh, um, summit because mm -hmm. um, that communication that both of you are talking about is absolutely so vital for the health of the relationship, relationship. and just understanding on both sides that um, goes a lot deeper to build that intimacy and build a better relationship and like both Nobody wants to, inf no, I shouldn't say nobody wants to inflict pain on others, but nobody wants somebody to, you know, purposely in a, in a relationship be injuring or hurting somebody. Right. And so that open dialogue is absolutely Unconsensual vital. pain. There you go. So there you go. Thank you. Thanks for, it's almost like you do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm being in sex med, you get some really interesting, um, lectures like learning yeah. about consent with bdsm and what is okay and what's not and what it is and what it's not so it's really interesting being a pelvic pt well and then to go along with like the pain like safeguard like I, creating kind of guardrails around pain one of the things that i'm super proud of in our manual you know we did so much research going into what are the contributors of pain how, like pain management what's missing in the clinical toolkit what do people want from a product that they're using and one of the questions that keep coming that kept coming up was how much pain is too much pain? Like, mm. how do I know if something's wrong? If, if, if I should be worried about this, if I should work through it, you know? And so what we actually did in our manual is we included a pain scale. So one through 10, and then just really provide parameters around that, you know? So it, when, when you apply pressure, um, it should hurt, but it should not get worse and it should not mm -hmm. hurt afterwards. Uh, you know, if, if, if it's between a three and a four, it's okay. If it's beyond that, stop, take a break, maybe work broader. Maybe if, yeah. if that does not continue in a way that it feels healthy, see a doctor. You know, it's like, how yeah. can we create a, a sense of understanding and education and security so that people can move forward? Mm -hmm. I love that. And pain yeah. will be different for everybody. Yeah, and totally. And for the same person, it can be different daily. And and like yeah. you said, it's for a product that's generally meant for so many different situations and people, it is hard to give that exact science. But I think those parameters are really great because, you know, three or four is generally like well accepted. Okay, it shouldn't get worse. And it's those factors, right? It shouldn't get worse. It shouldn't cause you to tense and not be able to breathe or relax. It shouldn't really be hurting afterwards, things like that. But for some person, people, a two can create that because, you know, chronic pain is different than acute pain when you, scra when you scrape your knee. But just because it's that on one day doesn't mean it will be like that on the next day or vice versa. And so, um, yeah, I think that those are great general guidelines for, for people using different products. 
And yeah. I guess my my main last question is essentially: Is there anybody that wouldn't benefit from these? Oh, yeah. want, you want to go first? Um, I don't know which. So yeah. far, I'm on this side, so you guys are all that way. I'm to on me. this side. <laughs> You're in the middle for me. <laughs> oh, I am. Oh, okay. There we go. Um, I mean, I think reports show that 75 percent of people with vaginas will have painful sex in their lifetime, um, and yet we live in a society that generally tells us the pain is normal and then we don't have the tools to self-assess early enough mm -hmm. and we don't have a medical system that supports us early enough and so mm -hmm. oftentimes people retreat into themselves and think that there's nothing that can be done so can the specific products that my company is like created to help people help everyone maybe not but at the same time the point, the purpose of our brand is education, education. first and foremost. Yeah. And, and it's, it's starting a conversation globally that painful sex is extremely common. Here are the <laughs> different kinds. Here are the different clinical providers who can help you. And here are a couple of tools. If you feel good about them, you can give them a try. Yeah. And I guess I worded that wrong because it, yes, not everybody may find the results and it may work perfectly for them. It was more, uh, I think I meant to more say, is there anybody that it would be contraindicated essentially to try these? No, essentially anyone could try them, whether or not it gets you to where you want to be. That's, there's many factors, but yeah, I mean, I, I will say like, if you've just had a hysterectomy, ONUT is super um, commonly used for folks who just had a hysterectomy, please wait until the suture site is healed. <laughs> Oh yes, of course. <laughs> you know, there's just like good things like that. It's like if you really want to go to town, great, but please just wait until you're clear. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah parameters good. like that. But essentially, like there's <laughs> there's really no contraindications. Like generally speaking, when you're cleared from medical conditions, that like, you can anyone could potentially benefit from them. Whether they do or not is is a different question, but. And same yeah. for your products. I, I know you mentioned a little bit yeah. about the THC, and I think p some people can get worried about that. It, it Because it's so low, it, you know, when people ask, like, would it come up in a drug test? It really shouldn't. Not the, C not the THC free ones. They really shouldn't. But how sensitive is the test they're using? How, right. how really strict are they? Um, how much are you using? If you know, if you're using five per day, I don't know why you would need that yeah. many per day. But um, it it would really depend if if your livelihood relies on it. You know, m maybe not. Maybe don't do it. Um, and that's why you have the other options. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyone, I would say, it, if the pain that they're experiencing is anything like related to bones, like you have to like vertebrae grinding together mm. it's not it's not going to solve that problem but anything with the muscle smooth muscle it's gonna there's definitely a good chance that it can help out with that um yeah as simple as cramps to ibs yeah yeah it can be just that simple and um i i think for most people it's just getting over the idea of a suppository. Yeah. Um, women tend, tend to be, I don't want to generalize, but women tend to be a little bit more open to them just because most of them use tampons. And so it's not as stigmatized, but um, there's definitely people that just don't want to try it at all. But when they do, they're like, oh my gosh, why mm -hmm. have I been doing this my whole life? Um, yeah. Or, um, especially as women who are entering menopause and perimenopause, they're also like, one gynecologist is like, every woman should know about these. <laughs> oh, please tell them all. Please, please tell me. them. Please, please tell this. Well, I know you also mentioned that you are trying to partner with different healthcare providers or physicians to do some studies. Do you have current studies or can you, can you talk about that at all? Uh, I've got a meeting next week with um, somebody. So I'm hoping that that will go somewhere because when we all, Topped at Ishwish, 
which is a, a conference that we all attended together. One of the talk, one of the studies presented was about um, cannabis use in um, sexual function and how I think the results of her study were people that were just cannabis users in general from somebody who would soak or vape or take an edible um, topical. So there was really no consistency on del on cannabis delivery. But mm -hmm. the, the consistency was is about 94% of people felt like it enhanced their sexual experience, which, yeah, I mean, I don't know of anything where 94 four percent of people agree on anything like 94 yeah. percent of people don't agree that chocolate is great you know like <laughs> which i don't understand but so to get 94 percent of the population that granted they have chosen to use it so they're probably already all in so it's probably a little bit of a skewed selection and 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 the folks using it but i mean there's definitely something to that and even at the endo summit that i talked to i'd say about half of the patients that talk to me are like, yeah, I'm already mm -hmm. using cannabis because it works for me. Yeah. Um, and then the other half are like, huh, what's this? You know? So, um, there's definitely people that are willing to use it or already enjoying it. Yeah. But, uh, so ha with that in mind, you know, we're hoping to get somebody who can get them in the hands of patients and, and try to get a little bit more of a, a study, so to speak, and get some data on people's yeah. experience, actual users' experience so with a specific delivery method. Um, yeah. Because you know, consistent smoking, stand, yeah. yeah. And smoking is a great way to get it systemic, but it's really not great for your lungs. And right. it's, it, it's not exactly what we're trying to target. You know, and it's hard to kind of get that limited dose too, where then people maybe have don't have a great experience, especially if they're not experienced. Yeah. And then they're like, I'm never touching that again. And you yeah. don't realize that like with tinctures, edibles, things like the suppositories, it's much more controlled and you can have a much lower dose so that you don't have that like paranoid freak out moment. Yeah. Well, how many cuts do I take? You know, if I'm right. smoking and, and, and it's going throughout your body instead of exactly where you need it. Exactly. Um, so that's, that's where we, I'm hoping that we can get further along next week and I'll have a little bit more to share, but awesome. If you know, any doctors or if you want to do a study, I'm down. We yep. Will, so we anyone listening provide. Yeah. Amazing. Happy well, how can product. people find your products? I'll list everything down in the show notes and things like that. But if you guys want to give your own little spiel or what to look out for next, I know we mentioned the launch of the Kiwi, which is excited, uh, exciting. So yeah. Go, how can people find you? if They want to use your products. Um, well, real fast. Also, uh, in in research news, we uh, we had our, an IRB approved study conducted in 2019 uh, with the University of British Columbia with Paul Young and Lori Brado, and it uh, it took a little longer than we thought because of COVID, but uh, it will finally results will be published this year, and they came out super positive, which we're really excited about. And Amazing. we're in the process of pursuing two more IRB approved studies with Kimi as well. That's so yeah. great. I actually did not know that you um, that you did a study with them. And Paul Young was on the podcast last season um, because of the the vestibular dynia connection. So that's amazing. I did not yeah, realize and it was that specific to an endometriosis patient population. Yeah, awesome. Virtually. I'll have to put. Yeah, we'll keep people posted when all that comes out. But that's really exciting. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we, we we were like very hands off because we're not allowed to be in the study, but you know, we're excited that people are excited about it. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and well, the way that you can find well, us, yeah, is we uh, we're the pelvicpeople.com. And if you forget that or anything, you just type in O-Nut or you can type in penis bumper or Kiwi O-Nut, Kiwi entry pain. I'm just going to give you search terms, all the search terms, like deep pain, O-Nut, bumper, a thing. I don't know, whatever. Well, you'll find us. And then on social media, we're uh, the pelvic people. Yeah. Perfect. I just love that you own the key term or keyword <laughs> penis bumper. It's like, good for you. That's like... People search it enough for it to come up. It's true. <laughs> And, and, and you can find us online at Pacific, like the ocean roots, like tree roots.com. So Pacific roots.com. And you can order their uh, pelvic providers uh, and, and they generally have a discount code there in January. You're more than welcome to share that code with uh, 
your listening audience. That's cool. Um, awesome. That way they can save on any purchase they make. Um, but again, you know, we, we really just want people to make sure that it works for them before they get into a big spend. Um, or, and there's really, and I, I, you mentioned contraindications earlier. There are no contraindications, according to my physician sister, that if you're taking a heart medication, this should not, there shouldn't be any contradictions with yeah. other medications because it's really hitting up your endocannabinoid system rather than anything else. Yeah, interacting with the system guys. related. Yeah. That's where I was um, going with that question. There, no, anyone can use them. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyone. Okay. Even on your heart meds, you're good to go. Perfect. Well, thank you both so much for coming on the show and talking about your products. I was very, really excited to have you. And a side note, I will make a plug for Jean and Soul Source Therapeutics and her dilators because I, she was, she's, what, where did she say? Costa Rica having fun. Jesus. So otherwise, yes. she Why would have probably been on her? too. I know. So um, I'll put all these links down below. And if you have currently used their products or after this want to use them and find them helpful, also review them because it helps others. But um, as we now learn, do not list that it helped your pelvic floor dysfunction or your pain. (laughs) You can say comfort and discomfort. Perfect. There you go. um, Yeah. Review them and let others know about them as well, because they are great products and we are happy to have you creating these for this population. And Thanks share them for with the opportunity. Your they don't know about them yet. Yes. 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 Please do. Tell all your it people. It helps a lot. Yep. Thanks for the opportunity. We really appreciate it. I do. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was fun to have you both. Good to see you both again. <laughs> Bye. If you or someone you know is impacted by endometriosis, we invite you to join the I Care Better community and take action today. Hit that like button and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform to stay updated on the latest episodes, stories, and expert insights. Connect with us on our website, iCareBetter.com, or social media platforms at iCareBetter. Together, we can make a positive impact in the lives of those affected by endometriosis. Join the I Care Better community today, and let's create a brighter future for all who suffer because of endometriosis.